Hi everyone, it's Mike. I'm one of the admins of the Moon Landing Hoax Facebook group. Starting today's live stream, I'm going to see if anybody uh, reports in the comments. We'll give uh, everybody a minute or so to see who wants to join and ask questions and participate. I'm going to make this one a relatively quick one today. I just wanted to go over for the group um, some information as to what's going on. I probably should have, uh, well, we got Ken, one of the moderators, joining us. We'll see if anybody else wants to join in the chat, see if we can get a good discussion going for, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes or so today. We'll keep this uh, relatively short. I can go on till about 6 o'clock today my time. It's about a half an hour from now, and then I have to call one of my clients. I probably should have clicked uh, share screen so I could share some data and information with you. Unfortunately, uh, how it works is either it shows my face or I can show data, but I can't go back and forth under the general uh, Facebook um, software, at least they have set up for me here with it, what I'm looking at. So I'm looking at my screen here with information. I can't share information with you to show. Maybe I'll download some software at a later date that allows me to do that. Uh, I got a couple viewers now. I'm sure oh, five viewers up to now <laughs> joined us. That's good. Um, but usually how this works is I'll finish talking and at the end, maybe a couple hundred of you will uh, watch this later on, get some insight into what's going on with the group. I figured I'd give you a little bit of history of the group um, and uh, some information about the direction it's going and some of the hurdles and obstacles that we face uh, being a quote-unquote conspiracy group, although we're actually not a conspiracy group, even though people would label us that way, and kind of some of the problems that we uh, face from trolls and other people that want to derail us here. So. Anyway, it uh, looks like I've got enough uh, viewers to get started, so I'll kind of go through a presentation. I'll take a look at the comments. If you guys have questions while I'm reviewing this, uh, feel free to ask in the comments and I'll answer. But uh, the first thing I wanted to talk about was the uh, shadow bands that our group goes under. So as a lot of you may know, uh, Dr. Rasa Vahari is the main administrator. I'm listed as admin number one, but uh, this is really Dr. Rasa Vahari's group. Uh, the problem is Facebook keeps banning him <laughs> his account, so it kind of bumped me up to admin number one, but I still consider him the leader, of course, and uh, we kind of follow his direction. Um, the group started, I believe, in 2015. However, believe it or not, uh, Rasa, as we call him, he's the guy with the Chinese text, and he's basically an American uh, expatriate that lives in China, and he's got a job with the uh, uh, Chinese space program over there, uh, which is why he's the perfect person to kind of lead and be an administrator for this group. And he has a lot of insights and knowledge. He'll probably be doing some live streams himself in the future. Uh, as I indicated in prior live streams with you guys, uh, Rasa and I tried to do a co-live stream with this Facebook software. It just didn't work for whatever reason. We tried to have both of our faces on so we could talk together. But that do doesn't seem to work, just like it doesn't seem to work for me to share screens with you. The only thing I can do is start sharing screens or do a full one where I show you my face, but I can't seem to do, um, you know, uh, uh, go back and forth with that, and I, I can't have another admin or anybody else join the uh, uh, discussion either. So nonetheless, we'll go over some uh, details I want to share with you today. We'll take some questions at the end, and then we'll end the live stream. We'll make this one relatively quick, okay? So um, as I indicated earlier, uh, Rasa started this group around 2015. He had a number of other uh, Moon Landing Hoax Facebook groups that he had started that were deleted and removed over the years. So basically, as long as Facebook's been around, Ross has been around promoting uh, the Moon Landing uh, information as a hoax, we would call it here. And the goal of the group is basically, it's not a debate group, okay? It's here to 
establish that the moon landings are a hoax, we know it, and to parse out and debate what the best evidence of that is and what is maybe not so good evidence, right? So we're trying to, uh, you know, separate our movement from flat earthers and people that discredit us and uh, just promote the solid best evidence that we possibly can that the moon landings were a hoax. And we knew they were a hoax uh, upwards of 20 years ago when researcher Bart Sabrell published that famous Apollo 11 fakery footage in his uh, documentary, A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon. Since then, there have been a number of developments proving that the moon landings were a hoax. And if you just search through our group, we have uh, countless examples, both in the photographic and the video record, okay? So basically what happened was around November, a little bit before Thanksgiving in 2021, our group went to about 2,000 members, which we had accumulated uh, over the years, uh, you know, since 2015. And uh, all of a sudden we started growing like crazy. Uh, over the holiday season of 2021 into 2022, we started growing to about 10,000 members. And now, as you can see, we're up to 42,000 in 2022. We've been growing like crazy, okay? So I'm going to show share screens with you here. Well, I can't actually. Uh, let me cite an example. So we started growing up until February 14th. And then we experience what we call a shadow man, okay? So what we look at is the number of uh, visitors that come to our page. And, uh, you know, it would go maybe a couple hundred would view us up until uh, November of 2021. And then all of a sudden we started getting maybe 15, 20 to 30,000 visitors per day in our group, which is fantastic. A visitor is somebody that has not clicked to join to be a member. That's just a member of the general public uh, coming across her posts and information. And uh, I don't fully necessarily trust the information Facebook gives for its metrics, but you know, to the extent that it's reliable, there's about uh, you know upwards of 30,000 visitors per day that we're seeing our page, which is fantastic. And then what happens is basically Facebook promotes the group. Uh, based upon its uh, algorithm, which looks at likes, comments, posts, and watch time and view time and all of that. And then it, you know, recommends posts to more people. And then we get more and more posts uh, that are seen by more and more people. And then eventually Facebook uh, puts the brakes on things. And, you know, one of the first major ones we came across was a little bit right after Valentine's Day, around February 18th. We went, I'm looking at my screen, I wish I could share it with you. We went from 30,000 visitors to about a couple hundred uh, near zero <laughs> in about a couple days. So from about February 15th, 16th, and the 19th, it goes whoop, all the way down from 30,000 to almost zero. Now, you can say that it's the government or somebody influencing Facebook to shut us down. Maybe, but I tend to think it's probably Facebook just putting the brakes on groups uh, just to give things a rest because I'm sure people are tired of hearing about us for a couple of uh, months that it goes through the shadow ban phase and then it picks right back up. So from February up until uh, I think it was late March, uh, then we had another explosion and went back to you know, we're getting 30,000 visitors a day. So there tends to be this ebb and flow in the group, usually for about 45 days or so, we're uh, exploding and everybody wants to see the group and is liking, commenting and sharing. And we're getting crazy amounts of comments in the group and uh, tons of activity. And then, you know, uh, about 45 days later for about a 45 day period, then it tends to be members only. I don't know why Facebook does that, but maybe only about 100, 200 people per day that we would call visitors will see our group. And then um, the rest of uh, the views basically come from members. And that's what we're going through essentially right now. You know, it's a shame that we're going through that period right now, but it is what it is. 
and I'm looking at my screen again. I wish I could share it with you, but uh, you know we had up on. I'm looking at the data here. On September 20th, we had 39,963 visitors. Uh, huge amount. Uh, in the past 60 days, we've had 1,950,086 people view the page, which is just amazing, okay? And kind of makes sense when you look at this, you know, you have 40,000 visitors on one day. And then I check here to September 22nd. So from September 20th to the 22nd, 612 viewers, right? And then September 24th, 203 viewers were down there. Today's the 26th. The Facebook information doesn't quite, uh, you know, go uh, to the exact day, but it updates uh, at least a few days uh, prior to, excuse me, let me just get rid of that call there. It, it, it goes basically, you know, to a couple days prior to the current day you're looking at and it allows you to view the data. And you can see and check for members joining. You know, we had about 200 to 300 members per day joining uh, up until recently. And then in September, it went down to about 100 members joining per day. And now we're getting about 30 per day, sadly. But, um, you know, uh, I'll share some other information with you. In the past uh, 60 days, We've had 17,029 posts and comments in our group, which is just amazing. We've had 9,602 people join us in the past uh, uh, 60 days as well, which is fantastic. So uh, basically, uh, now I'll go over you know, what we do to manage the group and keep out what we call trolls, okay? And the way we define trolls, Rasa, the other admin and I, is basically somebody that comes into the group uh, just to stir up trouble, right? They don't have any intention of uh, believing any of the information that we're sharing in the group. They are coming in uh, basically to be antagonists and to try and debunk us, of course, but the difference between somebody that has genuine questions uh, and somebody that's a troll is a troll has no intention of ever uh, believing any of the information that we put in here. So we, they will just keep moving the goalpost. Uh, I can cite an example, uh, just a troll I dealt with the other day. Um, not the other day, actually. It was, what, it was only five minutes ago, I think it was, uh, where uh, we had one of our uh, top contributing members, uh, Soul Survivor, made a post uh, and just linked to a uh, less than one second response time on one of the NASA missions. And you can notice this in the uh, American Moon movie uh, documentary by uh, uh, Mr. Massimo Mizuko, uh, who published that. We have that uh, pinned in our page if you want to watch that documentary, and we strongly recommend it. But he took a clip from the documentary where, you know, essentially Massimo is talking about, well, you know what, what's the speed of light to get to the moon and back, okay? And, uh, you know, that is uh, you know, generally about four seconds, okay? That we can give uh, between the time period of a radio signal going to the moon and back. Now, maybe there's some other lag or delay in that signal, but we know the laws of the universe say we got to abide by the speed of light, right? So it should be roughly four seconds, a little under two seconds to get there, about two seconds to get back, right? Uh, and, you know, there's a 0.9 second response time that uh, Soul Survivor clipped to out of Massimo's documentary. And the troll says, well, this is just one example, right? Uh, you, there's got to be more examples uh, for me to believe it. Well, you know, all it takes is one, right? So a genuine person would uh, want to look at the record or maybe uh, try and verify this information for himself. But a troll is, is somebody that uh, you know, wants to believe in the Apollo fairy tale no matter what, no matter what evidence we put forth, they're just going to keep moving the goalposts and they're going to say, well, this is just a one off, right? So I guess the uh, speed of light and the laws of physics were <laughs> violated this one instance and we can give them a blooper for that one instance, of course, and there's got to be more instances that we have. Um, 
to show the troll uh, before the troll's willing to believe us, right? So what we want in this group are people that are willing to challenge us on information we're putting that shows the moon landings to be a hoax uh, that, you know, isn't very strong, right? So if we've got a proof that we put out there and it's not a particularly strong proof, um, you know, we want to be corrected. I'll cite an example. I think it was uh, last year, I want to say, uh, you know, beginning of 2021, so about 18 months ago, I found uh, a photo from Apollo 14, and it was of the Earth um, uh, with its little sliver of light, of course. Uh, you can look at that photo, and uh, the astronaut is uh, pointing his camera up, and it shows the Earth with a little sliver of light toward the bottom. So you see the Earth uh, shine, as we call it, as a little uh, crescent toward the bottom. Uh, it's a black and white photo. You really can't see or make out any details of the Earth, but you can see the uh, little crescent toward the bottom. And then in uh, orbit, you know, we can see the crescent and it's the opposite. It's exactly inverted toward the top. So I thought, aha, you know, this is proof of Apollo 14 photography. They forgot to uh, leave the sliver of light for the Earth toward the bottom. And of course, I looked into it further and uh, one of the moderators uh, is a very intelligent man, uh, Gerald White. He has a great YouTube channel you should check out, by the way. Obviously, got wonderful uh, content there exposing the moon landings as a hoax. And, you know, he uh, posted in the comments and said, wait a minute, I don't think you're right, Mike. You should check that. I said, yeah, let me check it. So I went to uh, a piece of software that I use to uh, verify uh, positions of stars and positions of the moon and positions of the Earth. It's a great software, okay? So I downloaded this software and I checked out, uh, you know, exactly, you know, what the position would be uh, at the time. And you could enter in the exact time coordinates and you can move into the location uh, where the craft would be orbiting the moon. And you can enter the location exactly where they would be standing on the moon. And I saw, lo and behold, that the uh, light from the Earth uh, did invert. And the reason it inverted is, of course, because the moon is a round object just like the Earth is. So, for example, you know, I'm in the northern hemisphere in the United States, uh, Ross is in the southern hemisphere in Australia, and when we both look at the moon, it looks inverted relative to each other, right? Because the uh, Earth is curved, and he's on one side, I'm on the other. We look at it and voila, the moon appears upside down. Well, if we're standing on the moon, depending on our position along with the moon, uh, the, moon the earth is gonna appear upside down. And that's exactly what was happening in the photograph compared to the uh, orbital photograph compared to the ground photograph. So you know, I retract and say, okay, I'm wrong on that, right? Well, that's one example of the type of debate we like to have here. When we're shown wrong, uh, we like to remove that evidence and focus on the smoking gun evidence. And there's a lot of it out there. Uh, but what we don't like are people coming here dishonestly uh, that have no intention of uh, believing in the moon landings. And they're just here to just stir up trouble, make fun of us and whatnot, which uh, you know we don't tolerate here for obvious reasons, okay? So anyway, um, so, so how do we combat the trolls, as we call them in our group, okay? Uh, we have um, uh, basically a robotic moderator that we call Trolley, okay? <laughs> lovingly, of course, and it is an automated uh, system, and anybody that's an administrator on Facebook might know how this works. Basically, you can set it up to automatically decline comments, right? And we ban flat earthers here, so when flat earthers want to talk about, uh, you know, things like, uh, you know, I'm trying to think off the top of my head what they call it, <laughs> the, uh, you know, the, the dome or whatever, uh, or uh, uh, Von, Bern, Von Braun's uh, tombstone, I think they, they like to refer to. There's a bunch of, like, little flat earth trigger words that they like, uh, like dome and whatnot that they say, and, and we've got a number of them programmed into Trolley, 
what Trolley does is just declines to comment because you know we are not a flat earth group you know plenty of flat earth groups on Facebook if you want to go to any of those groups by all means go ahead and check them out all right but we are not that group and we don't allow comments like that in our group okay and then you know uh, people come in here will uh, drop a comment like idiot right that's not allowed so we have a number of comments of course that trolley just automatically blocks and it just makes the discussion a lot more um, uh, amicable uh, polite uh, so we can kind of focus on the evidence make it a little more dialectic a little less rhetoric in the group or shouting and uh, putting uh, pejoratives toward each other you know we don't want to do that we want a group that is uh, clean uh, focused on the evidence and isn't about you know uh, making fun of people uh, so much so we, we like to focus on the evidence and the information in our group and debating that and not uh, you know banter back and forth between the trolls and uh, the uh, you know the members of the group right because here's what happens I've noticed too so uh, basically uh, a troll will make a comment so you guys are a bunch of idiots that the Russians would have told us if uh, you know we faked the moon landings right and then uh, they call us idiots right and then one of our uh, posters will put something in the comments uh, just something uh, an insult that is just incredibly benign right and we had one poster this was about a little over a year ago uh, called uh, a troll a silly goose okay and what happened when our uh, member uh, called the troll a silly goose well Facebook um, of course tagged the silly goose comment that was hate speech right and then gave the guy a 30-day ban for calling the troll a silly goose. So anytime a uh, troll uh, tries to bait you in the comments, what you're supposed to do is just click report, have us get rid of them. You're never going to convince the troll. The troll is going to keep moving the goalpost. The troll is going to keep insulting you. And the goal of the troll is to get you to uh, use one of the trigger words for Facebook, which could be something as stupid as silly goose, right? You call someone a silly goose, well, guess what? You're getting a 30-day ban. That's not from us. That's from Facebook. So what we want to do is make sure that the trolls, as we call them, are removed from the group, okay? So we got Trolly to help us out with that, uh, and we need your help, too. So if you see any of these NASA trolls or flat earthers come in here, make their comments, help us get rid of them, click the comment, report it uh, so they, we can get rid of them, okay? Um, the other thing I wanted to share with you today is, um, believe it or not, there's actually advocacy in American law journals, okay? They have uh, government agents and allies infiltrate groups like this. And, I'm sure they're there. We have banned probably countless agents and trolls, but uh, agents that are trolls and they're paid to be trolls, right? Uh, there are agents, okay, of governments, and this is policy, and I'll give you a, a link. Uh, you know, like I said, I wish I could share screens with you. I can't, but I'll explain to you the article so that you can look it up for yourself uh, where this is actually discussed. and. Uh, uh, basically, the person in charge of uh, the Obama administration in 2008, particularly, is the White House Office of Information and Regulatory Affairs, okay? So Obama puts this guy in charge of the regulatory affairs under Obama. His name is Cass Sunstein, okay? So he publishes an article in law, in, uh, excuse me, Harvard Law Review, the University of Chicago Law School, Law and Economics, and a University of Chicago Law School. So three different um, journals uh, that this paper called Conspiracy Theories is uh, published under, okay? Cass R. Sunstein, University of Chicago Law School, along with Adrienne Vermeule, 
not sure I'm pronouncing that name right, but he's from Harvard University Law School, right? So they published this uh, article in 2008, okay? And I want to quote something from the article that you should find particularly fascinating. So, by the way, what is the uh, article? Uh, let's see if I can get a citation for it. Well, uh, well, quick story about that too, by the way. So when you look up conspiracy theories, the paper for Harvard University Law School, uh, public law and legal theory research papers. So if you were to look up this paper and get the uh, archive link for it at us.archive.org, uh, well, believe it or not, when I was originally researching all this uh, about two years ago, uh, Facebook would ban uh, the link. So you, I couldn't even link this to anybody, right? It would say, hey, you can't link this. Uh, I reported it, and I guess some other people did report it as well. Why would a us.archive.gov law review paper link be banned from you know, people being able to read it? What's the deal? Well, eventually they lifted that, so now I can um, I can uh, share it. So what I'm going to do is if any of you are uh, looking at the comments in this live chat, I'm going to drop a comment with the link to it and it should work and uh, voila, there it is. So I've gone ahead and linked it so you can click the link and see the paper there with me, okay? Uh, so check the comments if you want to check this paper out. But um, let's take a look at, uh, let me find the page on here for that particular uh, kill shot quote from the article. Well, basically the article is talking about how dangerous conspiracy groups are, how the government needs to take an active role in monitoring them, and also mitigating the damage they do. So the idea is this. I mean, I would argue that maybe some conspiracies are harmful, right? I mean, I think Flat Earth is a harmful conspiracy. But no, I don't think the conspiracy quote-unquote theories are harmful for the reasons they go into. I think they're harmful <laughs> for the reason that they uh, derail and, uh, I guess, push aside from the public view uh, and obfuscate um, genuine problems with the government that we want to discuss, right? So we're just trying to talk about how certain Apollo missions in the 1969 through 1972 were faked and, uh, you know, people glom onto that and so all of a sudden the earth is flat, right? And we don't believe that, but, you know, they promote this uh, flat earth nonsense and it just discredits us, right? Because obviously the earth is round, but, uh, you know, anybody that wants to look into genuine research into the Apollo uh, moon landings being a hoax is going to be tied into all this flat earth nonsense, right? And it's the same with 9-11, right? So people that uh, want to question, for example, Building 7 for 9-11 and, you know, how some random fire started in that building completely separated from the two planes and it just collapses. Well, you know, they throw out this misinformation uh, like laser beams are coming down from the sky. There's no planes, right? The planes are CGI they put in there and there's laser beams coming down to destroy the uh, Twin Towers, right? Well, that's nonsense. There's no evidence to support that. Uh, you know, people infiltrate you know, conspiracy groups and spread that crap all the time so that the general public associates us with nonsense theories and then they don't take us seriously, right? So this is one tactic, of course, to uh, attack conspiracy groups and that's why we ban flat earthers in our group, of course. Okay, but you know, there's also just general trolls that come in and government agents come in to do that. They have no intention in believing us. Their goal is just to uh, raise doubts and uh, cause trouble, right? So I'm going to page 22 of the uh, Harvard Law Journal article by Cass Dunstein, who by the way, you know, published this in 2008. Lo and behold, Cass Dunstein becomes uh, you know, part of the regulatory affairs uh, for the White House administrator for the Obama administration, right? So he goes from publishing this article to a uh, position of power in the uh, American White House, right? So it says here, uh, you know, 
it says, we mean that government efforts might succeed in weakening or even breaking up the ideological or epistemological complexes that constitute uh, conspiracy theory, as they call them, networks and groups. How might this tactics work? Uh, how might this tactic work? We crawl, recall that extremist networks and groups, including the groups that pervade conspiracy theories, typically suffer from a kind of crippled epistemology. Hearing only conspiratorial accounts of government behavior, their members become ever more prone to believe and generate such accounts. Informational and reputational cascades, group polarization, and selection effects suggest that this generation of ever more extreme views within these groups can be dampened or reversed by the introduction of cognitive diversity, right? This is what they're doing, right? This is me talking, by the way. Um, they're gonna introduce cognitive diversity. Now, this next uh, sentence is utterly fascinating. How are they gonna do it? It says, we suggest a role for government efforts and agents in introducing such diversity. Government agents and their allies might enter chat rooms, online social networks, or even in real space groups and attempt to undermine percolating conspiracy, conspiracy theories by raising doubts about their factual premises, causal logic, or implications for political action. So there you have it, right? Uh, this guy served in the White House and wrote a paper right before <laughs> around the same time uh, advocating that people like us are conspiracy theorists and that, uh, you know, uh, government agents infiltrate our group with the sole purpose not of uh, even considering anything we have to say here as serious, but to just try and derail us, right? So that's why we have um, uh, Trolley, as I, I mentioned earlier, the bot to kind of block some of these uh, NASA trolls that come in here with uh, no intention for serious debate, but just to go ahead and uh, make us look bad and, uh, you know, disparage us in the uh, comment section to our group. So anyway, that's about all. Uh, I figured I'd test this live stream today, see how many people I could get uh, viewing. Uh, like I said, once this is posted in the group, I'm sure there'll probably be about 100 or 200 of you will go ahead and view this. Uh, right now, we've only got about five live viewers, right? But as I indicated earlier, the reason for that is uh, we have about 42,000 members. Uh, and any given day, about 10 to 15,000 of the members will come visit the group. Uh, how many will see this post out of that 10 or 15,000? Well, probably about a couple hundred of you. And then, uh, you know, hopefully if you guys share this, like this and comment, we can get this seen by more people. This is my fifth live stream. And uh, hopefully we can get more people viewing these uh, so we can, you know, maybe by the time I get to the eighth, ninth or 10th live stream, uh, we'll get a routine established where you guys can come on and ask questions and we can make this more of a chat uh, going forward. So anyway, this was a completely off the cuff live stream. Didn't really do anything to prepare for it. Just uh, chilling out here in my office uh, when I get back to one of my satellite offices coming back here. Um, to just chat with you guys. So I got a client. I told I was going to call at six o'clock, so I'm going to do that. I have to get going now. Uh, if you do like these uh, live streams, just leave a comment uh, or click the like button. Uh, I'll do a couple more of these. I got a little bit more to say, uh, but if, uh, you know, uh, with the Facebook algorithm shadow banning us and whatnot, if uh, not too many people are liking these or viewing these so much, I'll probably just wait maybe the 45 days I was referencing earlier uh, when Facebook lifts our shadow ban and we start getting uh, seen by more people. So hope you guys are having a great day. Have a great evening and I'll see you on the next live stream. Have a good one. Bye-bye.